it, I have extended the cardboard capability and up to touch there and coming out. It all seems to be pretty clear. Now I've got a smaller gear in, way easier. So that should keep all of the cast iron dust off of the main ways not really protecting the slideways here of the cross slide so I might just get a piece of cardboard and put it there as well so dialing in the 100 tooth gear and I've dialed this in jaw to jaw just in case so it's settled at eight and a half eight and a half eight and three quarters and eight and a half that's how it was before it was basically eight and a half it was, it was seven all the way around but when it got knocked it got knocked and that's how sensitive it is so that's that bit next we can foul that's that's one two three four five six Six and a half foul run out. So now I'm going to get the hammer out and just tap it a few times and we'll see where we'll go from that. Right, we're back on that same jaw. I've hit it a few times. I don't want to hit it too hard and I've got it down to quarter of a foul. Half of half a foul. So that's one jaw. That's another jaw. That's another jaw. And that's the other jaw. So we're definitely within half a thousandth of facial run out. Mm. But these high spots that you see now, we should get a high spot. That high spot, oh, that's not the highest, look at the highest, that's the highest high spot. Let me just take you out and show you where that is. So that's halfway in between a jaw. Well, you can still see the gaze there, cool, and you can see what's happening. So we bring it to the jaw, and that one is zero. Halfway between, that's half a thou over. And then back onto that jaw again, it's back to zero. And that's half a thou below. And that's back to zero. And that one to th that's a thou above there. And it comes down to zero and just slightly below zero. So zero on that jaw. Zero on that jaw. Zero on that one. And zero on that one. Okay. So now I'll put it back into the bore and double check the bore and if I need to adjust it I'll adjust it again and then double check it with the face again. Sort of way. So now I am going to bore that hole out. So I need to take some measurements. So I've got a telescope gauge. Let it centralise out a bit. Put a bit of an angle on it. And pull it out. And as I was pulling it out, you feel the resistance as it comes out. If you don't feel resistance, just do it again. You put it at an angle. The two, the two telescoping ends, they'll be longer than the bore is wide, because it's not parallel to it. It's at an angle, so it'll be longer. You tighten it up at that, and then when you drag it out you'll feel resistance. Now, I dragged it out a little bit, cocked it up a little bit, put it back in again, centralised it, and then pulled it out, and I felt resistance on the way out, so I'm very happy I got a good measurement. Obviously, you always double check your measurements. So, let's see what this measurement is. Oh, yeah, I'm messing this up pretty badly. So, there's just a bit of resistance like I felt when it came out. And it's on the zero, and it's six twenty-five. So that's probably right, because it probably is six twenty-five. I'm pretty happy with that measurement. So I've got the gauge, squash them in together, put in the bore, lift it up to an angle where it's going to be extended too much. Centralise it a little bit by wobbling it, and then drag it out. You can feel resistance. As soon as the resistance is gone, you can pull it straight out because you've gone past centre. 
and that has pushed the two what it's done is it's just pushed the two rods in together if we get the same measurement again it must have been the measurement we were looking for but again I'm not feeling the, the thimble here what I'm doing is I'm constantly moving the telescoping gauge until I feel it with the same kind of resistance as it took to get out if you do too much you'll just push it in and again if you get off centre with these gauges I don't know about your telescoping gauges if you get off centre like that and you'll start pushing them in a little bit so that's how I got 625 and 6 I think something like that yeah 6, 625 and 6 so I'd say that's a 625 hole and I'm within 6, 7 tenths of measuring it in two measurements so I'm quite happy that's the right measurement now the hole I'm going to is this hole here and you know, when these gauges are all the way extended like that they can pass through there and not get a measurement so we'll get another set of gauges I think it is no there we go so this is uh, not 890 there it is no I'm getting the wrong figure so it's 875 this is 875. Yep. Eight and three quarters. Double check your measurements. Eight and three quarters. Probably a thou over eight and three quarters. So here we can see I've got a couple of magnets holding this on. And oh, I don't know if you can quite see it. Let me just move you. Just see it now. So we can see the tool up here. And that's way past the bore size, so that'll be the bore size. And we can see the interference of the cardboard here. That'll be the maximum bore size about there. So I've got plenty of clearance. So I think I'm ready. I'm ready to start boring. Mm. What I want to do is I want to take that entire key out with the first operation, so... I'm just going to plunge it at that. So I've just brought it out. Hopefully it's not too much for it. And now that's in the key. As you can see. Just touching. I don't know if it's the right thing to do or not. We'll soon find out, eh? <laughs> and let's let it warm up for a second. Oh, speeds run this out at the moment. I'm running it at around about 300, that is, I think. No, it's not. It's less than 300. That's about 200. About 300. That's about 300 RPM. Take it more than that, it's a very small cut. This is my favourite speed so far, so I'm just going to see what kind of action we get on that. If it's abrupt, I'll come straight out of it.
belt snapped. Yeah, my belt snapped. Oh great, so that's the fan belt that's just snapped. So that's the motor still running. That's 50 hertz. <laughs> And that's where we were, 10 hertz. So that's more fun I've got to have now. I hope I didn't chip the tooth when it came to a stop. Uh, the insert, no, it hasn't. Maybe I forgot to press record. <laughs> so it's 7.71. At present. Approximately. So I'm putting my digital DTI on. Right here, that's where the tool pipe was. And as you can see, it's at back here now. So I've got to do some minor adjusting. And take 50 of those. You see that? Yeah, it's fifty and a half thousandths. Click it in. That's a hundred thousandth total cut. Wait for it to warm up. Give myself some defolia. Speed! Let's see what this goes like. Oh, you can't see anything. My no, just when it kicked out at the end, it all that tool pressure from putting a 50. Well, it was actually, I took it down to 41 thou because I suddenly realized it's 50 thou per side. And if I take 50 thou per side off and it overcuts, that will definitely be too big. So that should be now exactly 20 thou shy of what I need. Oh man, I'm gonna hit the camera up after I've got a different angle. Just pause for a second. Right, I have set up the small bar. I'm going to have to touch off on this. Don't replace that. Well, I've got more space now, but the finish on that is glorious now. That bar in that bar just puts an absolutely beautiful finish on it. Really does. Screams a little bit, as you can hear there, at the lower speeds. I usually speed it up to around about 3,000 for that. I 
and even the measurement gets more accurate. You can feel when it comes out, it's so smooth. And my measurement system has gone wrong somewhere, I don't know what's happened. Just measuring that, and that is going to slip straight in there with loads of play. Well, I hope the Loctite is good, because <laughs> that's about 2,000 clearance. Damn. So that one's not good. And there's nowhere in that. I used to, you know, if you wanted a loose fit, <laughs> that would be a loose fit. Damn. But that's what I'm going up tonight. So I'm now going to dial that in until that is concentric. Well, I don't think it needs to be concentric, but I think it'd be best. I've got to find some way of locking the headstock. That's in free running now. Put it to back gear, I can still turn it. So. I've got that backlash there so that's the backlash in the back gear back into normal gear there is no backlash but it's very easy to turn so I've got to find a way of locking the spindle up as well to do this I think I might just get a, a ratchet strap and blocks of wood <laughs> so a bit, but I think a few blocks of wood with some ratchet straps will probably do it or I might get a hole saw into a block of wood and if you can see in here probably not so I might get a hole saw and make it approximately this size maybe one size down cut it in half get it so I can put a, a, a wooden clamp around the spindle nose here and then have the wood a little bit longer coming out to about bring it back in again into a better position so you can see it so when I've got the clamp out have that wood coming out to about here and then have it all the way down the front or all the way down the back it'd be even better it's nice and flat down there uh, clamp a piece of wood on that and then screw it together just to try and lock the spindle up but I'm going to do something to lock the spindle up all right here we go for another comical setup fingers crossed I will be able to get this tool this is the tool I'm going to be using for cutting the slot I've got some back rake on it it wasn't quite straight you can see it's cut back a little bit it's severely cut back in the back section it is chamfered back slightly here and here uh, but that's what I'm going to be using I'm slotting that in there like that. Not too much stick out. <laughs> Not that the stick out's going to make much difference to this. Um, we'll get the appropriate Allen key and see if it reaches, see if these grub screws reach that far down. So, yeah, halfway on four and a quarter is there. Bang in, that's bang on. That's as close as it's going to get anyway. See what I'm doing there. So, four and a quarter is my centre height, and four and a quarter marks top of my fingernail. Can't really see it very well, but that is in the centre of that tool. Bring another thing out to get a touch. Yeah, we've got a touch all the way across. Alright, so, zero it out of that, we want 56,000 coming out of that. Okay, there's a slightly better angle for you so you can see what's happening. So we'll take another 2,000. So we can get some better lighting on there. Sure, I can. Right, another two thousand.
See what I got then. Here's the old battered key. Oh, there's a bit of rock in it. It's not, I don't know, it's getting stuck halfway down. Oh, that's because that's chewed up that one. Yeah, that's tight. I think this key is not. Yeah, that's tight. That is tight, man. Tight like a tiger. There we go. Get full depth of cut. Yeah, I'll get that. I'll get that in there. No problem. So I just realised I've moved off from the cast iron or onto steel now. I'm just putting the key in some steel and. I am four thousandths into my cut. So I thought I'd better get a bit of a recording of this. Get a bit of oil. Seven. 
To stop more up the finish with the soft jaws I had. There we go. Now it's swarf out into the bin. Oh, I suppose you can see the chips that it was making there. I don't know if you can see them. Little curly chips. Quite nice actually, really. So, um, let's brush these bits out. Yeah, that last chip I made was a little bit wrong. Not to worry, I can take it out with the file. I just raised the burr halfway down when I took a strike halfway down just to see. And it's not completely straight at the bottom if you can see in there. There is around about a hundredth of a millimetre difference. Let me just take that burr out. I'll have a closer look at it. Oh, there's a 
have on it. Like so. Just using a little file. Yeah. Okay, cool. So this was a used part. I've tried to match up the keyways with my wooden chuck holder and I ain't done bad there I don't think. I'll take the bears off. And yeah, it's cutting around about two hundredths three hundredth of a millimeter not wide enough. So I'm just gonna file it out a little bit, I don't know if you can see it on that edge. See that little land is minute but it does stop the key going in i can just file that to shape now if i put the file in there i'll show you what i mean so the file there's the right where the tip of the file is there's like a line and now i'm just going to go in with the file and do that but i'm not doing it there i will do it in a safer position to do it but that's extended the key so now i've got a full Half inch spindle, the key will weigh down it. And these two diameters, I've turned this bit of diameter here, they are identical to the tenth. It's good. Just tempted to get in there and do that now, but no. Take a bit of time and get it right. There we go, that's done. Wicked. So I made this, and this is a pressing mandrel at the top end of a shock absorber. The bolt which holds it all together broke off of here. Of just a simple facing, and then a minor boring operation. Nothing interesting. Took a couple of seconds, uh, but that is so. I can put that in the press, lay the gear on top of it. I'll put some of these things now so I haven't got somebody in my hand. So I can lay that on top of the that in the press, centralise it, put that in position, the key, and then press it all together. That's what that's for. Now this is 64 thousandths thinner than the Holbrook, so obviously I need 32 thousandths sticking out of each side. So I want this pushing through. When it's pushed through, I want a little bit of clean up because I doubt that face will be parallel to that face. So I'll have to dial this face in in the fore jaw afterwards and the bore to get it nice and concentric and then face off the end till three thou. This Bridgeport drive shaft and I've cleaned it off a bit. It was pretty manky. But it should do the job. Four collars. About 30 thou too wide. To press into the gears. Forty tooth gear. That's to mirror the original gear size. Key in there. Eight tooth gear to mirror the original gears. tooth gear this one we've got a slight problem with key fits just as good as the other ones it just fell out then <laughs> all right it did fall out then it, it, it's good tight fit but the problem with this one is I overboard it slightly so the collars fit in 
todo hay. A bit more light on the subject, might be able to see it a bit better. So that's all the colours are doing, they're just making the gears centralise. So they're too thin so they just sit too far in, so I'm just pulling them out a little bit so they're centralised. Doesn't have to be done, but should be good. That one doesn't give you the full representation of how wide these things are. Let's stick this one in. This one's a tighter fit. Bit gnarly at the end at the moment. Still got to face it off. Got to put these back into the lathe in the four jaw. Get them parallel and concentric. And face the two ends off. Probably take a couple of thou off to make them perfect. Still got nasty bits on them. But that's too loose. That might be alright actually. Does rock a bit though, so. I haven't decided what I'm doing to this one yet. I might just run with it and hope for the best. I was thinking about making a thou shim up. I've got some brass to make a thou shim up and then press it in with that. But uh, I'll see. It does feel pretty good to be fair. All the rest of the gears. Like this one, the first one I did the 127. These will not go in. They start on the chamfer. You can see that. Just a little chamfer on the edge of that. Start on the chamfer and we'll press in with these in the hydraulic press. We'll put some Loctite in with them. So, next port of call, chop these up, or chop this up into what will be these. Four of them, press it together with Loctite. Okay, we're at the press and I have some high strength Loctite. Yep. Avoid breathing vapours. We have a gear. to move isn't it not obviously two hands two hands required with a hole in the center slightly bigger than the hole in the gear so the hole in the center of that slightly bigger than the hole in the gear and a slight chamfer on it as well Oh, 
Just that one. Just one more time. Look too far. Just shoot the shit on my nose. Just one more time. Grab that. It's just going to be on the way. Oh, there we go. It's going to be on the way. One more. And we'll be done. Let's have a look at this one, and it will be done soon. Let's cross, keep looking forward now. Let's go. Wait, here we go. Let's go. There she goes. See if that's in all the way. Seems to be. Right, one more time. Just like all the rest, give it one last push just to make absolutely certain. Five tons I'm putting on there of pressure just to make sure it's squeezing the gap, that gap there, as best as possible. And I'm going to clean them all up. Well, this is the setup I'm going for three jaw because there's no consistency to, <laughs> I haven't got to make the shaft concentric for making the gear run parallel. Since that should be pressed in concentric, we'll find out soon. All I need to do is face off that end. Great. Oh, uh, put it back into gear, obviously, that sometimes helps. So we touch off. Close enough that if I go too close now, I'm 
let your jab in so I've just locked off the carriage and we'll put on tooth out that's just taking dirt off put on another tooth out well like I said I was putting on three foul just because That's three thousand. Bit more speed. Nice finish cut going on. I hope. table grab over the tool I'm putting this tool in which is a 45 degree chamfer tool I'm not putting it all down to the bottom I'm just going to pull it up a little bit slow the speed back down again should be slightly above centre now way too far above centre way too far sorry about all the shaking about but no it's touching That's too long. That is too low. Well, I took too much out now, I reckon. Well, not too much, but you know what I mean? I think I've overdone my champ for now. Yeah, it's a bit of a gnarly edge that is, but let's clean it up a bit. I want to take a bit more out of that. I'll be right. Not the best of gears. So that's that edge cleaned up. Better angle. No, can't get a better angle. So spiky. There we go, that was the worst of the ends. It's a bit gnarly inside the shaft there. That's the other side of where we finished that one. I forgot to do recording, I realised halfway through again. Well, there we go, that gear is finished ready to try I've done one more already that one's a whole lot better because this is out of the centre of that shaft which I took down and that's really turned out well obviously that's got some threads in it from when it was bolted in but yeah, that's good very good not tried it yet. Now I've got this 100 tooth one to do, but can't do that one yet. I'm going to leave that one overnight for the Loctite to set up properly. I'll give, give, give it a good 12, 24 hour 
chance to set up, but same operation on that. And the next gear I'm going to be doing is going to be this 40 toother. So I might put it in there and do it there as soon as those jaws are set up, but I might not. I might put the other jaws back in, the external jaws back in now, because that can be held in the external jaws. Although I do need this chuck these jaws in for the 100 toother. So I might just do it in there, just because, you know, <laughs> take my time, take it easy, check tool clearances so I don't clash with the the sticky outy jaws and, ooh, some concentration going on. <laughs> <laughs> 